Today, eco-fascist protest group Just Stop Oil, famous for committing acts of vandalism against private property and works of art, has finally managed to do something so morally repulsive that even its devoted fans have walked away. Two activists sprayed orange paint over the UNESCO World Heritage Site of Stonehenge, a Neolithic-era circle of rocks dated to as early as 3000 BC. The Bronze Age structure is one of the most significant heritage sites in the UK and, of course, has nothing whatsoever to do with the coal and oil industry that Just Stop Oil pretends to protest against. Their des desecration of this site was a stunt a stunt that should attract a jail sentence if the UK's activist judges can finally see some sense. Now, having been let off many times in the past, Just Stop Oil have escalated their antics and now, it seems, they have done permanent damage to the fragile lichen on the surface of the rocks. Now, Just Stop Oil claimed responsibility in a tweet saying, and I quote, Two people took action the day before summer solstice, demanding the incoming government sign up to a legally binding treaty to phase out fossil fuels by 2030. One of those protesters was a 21-year-old Oxford student. And no, I'm not going to repeat their quotes because that's exactly what these attention-seeking vandals want. The other was a 73-year-old man from Birmingham. Both have been arrested. A spokesperson from the English Heritage site called the attack, and I quote, extremely upsetting, and they are investigating the damage. Prime Minister Rishi Sunak called the action a disgrace, while Labour leader Keir Starmer wrote on Twitter, the damage done to Stonehenge is outrageous. Just Stop Oil are pathetic. Those responsible must face the full force of the law. And for some spineless, unknown reason, UNESCO has not yet made an official statement. Just Stop Oil have previously caused damage to famous historical paintings and have been let off with minor fines when ordinary people would have been given jail time. The reason for leniency has been judicial sympathy for the climate change agenda, even though the law is not meant to take political sides. Indeed, the UN tried to intervene on the one occasion when protesters were actually handed proper prison sentences for stopping traffic for over 40 hours while they climbed up a suspension bridge and hung their banners over it. Their act of public nuisance rightly attracted jail time, but the UN tried to claim it was a breach of international law and might risk silencing public concerns about the environment. What absolute rubbish. They were trying to stop people climbing bridges, not silence content on climate change. The UN rep said, and I quote, I am gravely concerned about the potential flow and effect that the severity of these sentences could have on civil society and the work of activists expressing concerns about the triple planetary crisis and, in particular, the impacts of climate change on human rights and on future generations, end quote. The UN is, at least, in part responsible for the acts of desecration going on at the hands of these malicious vandals. The result of all of this support from foreign bureaucracies is exactly what you'd expect. An entitled, privileged class of activists engaging in ever more destructive stunts, believing themselves to be above the law. Just Stop Oil is not some random group of student protesters. It is a well-financed group that attempts to bully governments into making policy decisions that benefit the renewables energy by using disruption, nuisance, intimidation and criminal damage as a means to pressure government. It's time for the funding structure of Just Stop Oil to be revealed and its biggest investors held liable for the damage done by its useful idiots.